Hello to our viewers on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Thank you so much for joining our live stream today. I'm Lynette Tremblay, Edmonton Global's Vice President of Strategy and Innovation. Edmonton Global is an investment attraction and trade corporation focused on increasing global trade and attracting investment in the Edmonton metropolitan region in Alberta, Canada. Today, we'll be speaking with four expert panelists about the incredible opportunity that exists in Alberta for commercializing research and development in the biotechnology sector. Our four panelists include Alberta's Jobs, Economy and Innovation Minister, Doug Schweitzer, Dr. Lauren Tyrell and Dr. Michael Houghton from the Lee Kaixing Virology Institute at the University of Alberta, and CEO of Applied Pharmaceutical Innovation, Andrew McIsaac. First, I'd like to introduce Drs. Tyrell and Houghton. Dr. Tyrell is an Order of Canada recipient and is the founding director of the Lee Kaixing Institute of Virology at the University of Alberta. Dr. Houghton is the director of the Lee Kaixing Applied Virology Institute. And last year, Dr. Houghton received the Nobel Prize for his work in the discovery of the hepatitis C virus. Dr. Tyrell, Dr. Houghton, thank you so much for joining us today. Our pleasure, thank you. Thank so you. I'd like to start by asking you both about the biotechnology sector from a global perspective before we look at Alberta. What are some of the most interesting things that you're seeing happening across the world right now in this sector? Well, <clears throat> internationally, this is probably the most exciting sector of uh, industry uh, in a long time. And what has happened in the last year with COVID illustrates how rapidly we can adapt to difficult situations. And the example is in vaccine development. Usually it takes five to 10 years to develop a vaccine. And from the time this virus was discovered until we had vaccines uh, with emergency use authorization it was uh, less than a year. That's a remarkable, remarkable development. Mm -hmm. In the whole sector, there's many different areas that have come up in changing medicine in dramatic ways. The use of monoclonal antibodies in many diseases has really changed diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease. We see uh, new approaches to cancers with uh, CART T cells that had uh, some origin here in Edmonton as well. We see the oncolytic viruses. And we also see the applied... Uh, by um, computers applied to drug design and how we can come up with new drugs much more fast. So this is uh, much quicker. And uh, I think in the long run, we're going to benefit from many of these rapidly developing technologies. The great acceleration, as it were. Dr. Really? Houghton, what are you seeing? Well, I agree with uh, Dr. Tyrell that the RNA vaccine field has been um, incredibly um incredibly effective for COVID. And I think RNA vaccines are gonna transform the vaccine industry in general because they can be applied to most infectious diseases. They also can be applied to therapeutic use. Um, I think the other major development that's happened recently is in the CRISPR uh, technology where you can knock in and knock out genes. And I think not only will this enhance basic research tremendously, but also it can be applied to various genetic diseases. So you mentioned that beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there are other pandemics and chronic illnesses that the world continues to battle. And these new technologies and applications uh, that are being applied, one of such uh, viruses that the world continues to battle is hepatitis C virus, which you and your team discovered, Dr. Houghton. Can you both tell us a little bit about the research pipeline you've developed at the Li Kaixing as it relates to these other viruses, chronic illnesses, and global pandemics, and where there may be some opportunities for commercialization of that research? Yes, the Li Kaixing Applied Virology Institute and the Li Kaixing Institute have been working hard. And I would just say that Dr. Houghton, when he came to the University of Alberta, changed the way people think at the university or in our area and uh, really thought more about how we would bring products to market to benefit patients. And that's been one of the themes that he has been very much uh, about. I'm not gonna talk about hepatitis C, but we do have a whole program in hepatitis C, which Dr. Houghton is leading. But we also have a program that looks at group A strep, the, virus, the bacteria that causes the strep throat. And we may have a vaccine developed in that with Dr. Michael Good, who's a collaborator from Australia. 
We have an excellent program, I think, in developing antivirals for cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus is the virus that causes most problems with transplant patients, particularly bone marrow transplant patients, and is often fatal. Many people have cytomegalovirus with no problem, but immune compromised patients, it's a huge problem. So we are developing antivirals there. And with Dr. Jack Germanis, we're developing uh, small molecules that may have an effect on Alzheimer's disease. These are preclinical pre uh, in work, although the uh, vaccine for group A strep is just at the stage of phase one approval from Health Canada. I'll let Michael continue from here. Thanks, Lon. Yes, I'm Hep C. Um, we have uh, very good diagnostics. We have very good blood tests to protect the blood supply uh, of the world. Uh, we have now very good therapeutics um, that can cure most patients in a couple of months with minimal side effects. What we need to end the hepatitis C virus pandemic, and it is a pandemic that kills around 400,000 people every year around the world, is a vaccine. So we have developed one of the leading vaccine candidates uh, in our institute over the last several years. We're currently manufacturing it under GMP at the university. We have this wonderful facility within the University of Alberta to make materials under good manufacturing practice for clinical trials. That's what we're doing right now with Hep C. We've had a few delays because of the COVID pandemic, uh, restricting manpower and so forth. Um, but uh, we have partners uh, waiting to test this vaccine in the clinic uh, that probably will be initiated at the end of this year, beginning of next. So um, I think the Hep C program we have is uh, very promising. That's incredibly exciting. And with the prospect to, as you mentioned, save 400,000 lives per year. So, I mean, there's a lot of attention being paid to COVID-19, rightfully so, but we have a lot of other pandemics that uh, that we need to be producing vaccines for. And it sounds like the work at the Li Kaixing is is really taking us years, years in advance around um, solving those problems. And uh, you mentioned that uh, you're working on how to bring these drugs to market. So at this point, I'd like to bring in Minister Schweitzer uh, to, to speak a bit to, to that and what the government of Alberta is doing. So uh, Minister Schweitzer is the Minister of Jobs, Economy and Innovation for the province of Alberta. His ministry oversees the implementation of Alberta's economic recovery plan, sector strategies and Alberta's growth agenda. Prior to being elected, uh, Minister Schweitzer was a partner at Denton's, the largest global law firm. Minister, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on today. So um, the uh, doctors were, were talking about the uh, incredible research pipeline they've developed, and the government of Alberta recently announced $20 million in support for the Li Kaixing Institute of Virology. You've also highlighted the pharmaceutical sector as part of your economic recovery plan and put out a call for proposals to grow domestic vaccine production. So with all of these recent announcements, uh, I'm wondering if you can share for us uh, what your long-term strategy and vision is for the life sciences sector here in Alberta. Well, the thing that's really interesting is that, uh, you know, most Albertans aren't aware of the, the building blocks that we have in our province. And, and you know what, to their credit, this, all, this goes all the way back to Premier Stelmack and the investments that they made in attracting people like Dr. Houghton, establishing the Li Kaixing Virology Institute, getting that world-class research being done right here in Alberta. So we're continuing that uh, that momentum with additional funding we provided to the University of Alberta and the Institute there to continue to get to commercialization of this just groundbreaking research and development that's happening there. But right now, you know, with the pandemic going on around the world, it's forcing governments in Canada in particular to kind of go through a rethink of health security. You know, we've seen the European Union make for the noise recently around vaccine nationalism. Who would have thought vaccine nationalism would be the issue of the day uh, in 2021? And it's hu a huge issue. So we make sure that we have, we invest in our military for national security. You need to have a stable you know, food supply chain to make sure we can keep everybody fed. But now we're taking a look at health security in a whole new light. In Alberta, a, you know, our Alberta Health Services and our health ministry, we spend well north of twenty billion dollars a year, you know, providing health services to Albertans, and they deserve those health services. 
Uh, and we want, but right now with the instability in supply chains, we're taking a look at how do we build this out domestically? So that's why we called for you know, proposals. We had 17 proposals coming in, many of them very exciting. So we're going through a review process right now, due diligence on those projects. Just take a look at how do we build up development of vaccines and build on the building blocks that we have, but also take a look at manufacturing capacity here in Alberta as well. Are you able to share the timeline for some of the uh, proposals that you're reviewing and uh, when you expect to be able to talk about next steps? Well, we understand that speed is, is just critical right now because we're, we're completely reliant on, you know, importing vaccines into Canada you know, to, to deal with, you know, kind of what I call is like COVID 1.0. Uh, we know that we're going to need to get everybody vaccinated in Canada or as many people as possible in Canada vaccinated. Uh, right now to deal with this current wave of the pandemic. You know, experts have also kind of said there could be needs for booster shots. Uh, we don't want to be held up with vaccine nationalism for booster shots. We've seen many variants come on. Uh, you've got the UK variant, there's a Brazilian variant, a South African variant. Uh, and for the need for booster shots, we want to position Alberta to be able to deal with that. So we know that they'll take a little bit of runway to get this built out uh, here domestically in Canada, but there's a role for us to play in Alberta, working in collaboration with other provinces and the federal government to build out a domestic strategy here in Canada. And obviously a huge part of that, as you mentioned, is uh, growing the domestic vaccine production to keep Albertans safe and to be able to build that out. But as uh, Drs. Tyrell and Houghton mentioned, there's also a pipeline of of research that can be commercialized, um, you know, during and post pandemic. So can you speak a little bit to the role you think the life sciences sector can play in diversifying Alberta's economy and, and some of those strengths that you mentioned? Well, you know, what's really interesting, you know, before the pandemic, we, you know, we were taking a look at their, the timing of the, of the kind of life sciences, the pharmaceutical industry that could be built out in Alberta. And it kind of looked like a mid 2020s decade, maybe late tail end of this decade opportunity from a jobs and commercialization standpoint. But with the acceleration of research, as the uh, as the two doctors mentioned, you know this is going way faster than people had anticipated, and this pandemic has led to breakthroughs, you know, breaking down barriers for speed, and that's an opportunity for us as well. So this is a health security. So you have to look through this. How do we help keep people healthy? But there's also a development opportunity from a jobs perspective because if we make that investment in dealing with this pandemic, it also provides the building blocks for a whole bunch of other areas that can be just bolted onto that and grow for opportunities here in our province. And Alberta has an amazing you know, research capacity, building blocks for diversification. So we're looking at, because I'm the jobs minister and innovation, uh, we're looking at jobs that can be created, but also how do we keep people healthy in our province? That's great. And actually a really good um, opportunity to bring uh, Andrew McIsaac into the conversation. Uh, from a sort of jobs and development perspective. So uh, Andrew, Andrew's the CEO of Applied Pharmaceutical Innovation, a not-for-profit organization that partners with industry researchers and startups to accelerate drug development. A uh, very timely conversation right now. And Andrew, you joined us last week. Thanks for joining us again. Andrew, a question for you. When it comes to growing the pharmaceutical industry here, we've spoken about the assets and the competitive advantages, as the minister mentioned. Uh, but can you speak to what what are some of the missing pieces to truly unlock the potential that we have here and how the recent government announcements are addressing those pieces and uh, what what you see on on the other side of this? Absolutely. Absolutely. And thanks for having me back. Um, so uh, to be honest, I'm thrilled with the announcement from uh, the provincial government uh, looking at security of supply as both an economic development mechanism, but also a way to keep our burdens healthy. Um, I think there's a real opportunity here. Uh, Alberta for the longest time has had a very strong pipeline of talent um, and a lot of grads from our post-secondary institutions end up at global companies outside of Canada, um, you know, from Pfizer to Takeda to J&J, &J, you name it. There's grads from uh, universities in Alberta working for those companies. Um, and one of the big uh, sort of areas where we can grow the life sciences sector here within the province is by providing some of that commercial scale up infrastructure. So the ability of companies to, uh, as they move through the development process, you know, within the Li Kai Shing and other institutes uh, and are producing for the early stage clinical trials, we need to have the capacity to produce for phase three and beyond. And Alberta as a province has actually uh, proven itself uh, in the past as a source of um, security of supply. Uh, for example, the Gilead facility in here in, uh, in Edmonton is 
you know, um, a half a billion dollar facility that produces for the early stage um, uh, clinical trials, late stage clinical trials and early market for Gilead. Uh, so they produce the chemical inputs. And right now with the attention around reshoring and adjusting to the changes in the way that we look at pharmaceutical supply chains, there's a very strong advantage in Alberta um, for companies that want to build in that resilience. Uh, and at the same time, there's that robust, robust pipeline of um, discovery and innovation coming out of our post-secondary institutions. So we've got both in hand. Um, I'm really, you know, looking forward to the coming years as we build out um, that later stage capacity and continue to attract and, and grow companies here. Um, due to the emerging nature of us as a biotech hub, you know, it's a place where you can recruit and grow companies uh, for the long run. And I think that that's going to be a real competitive advantage, uh, you know, not just to our local innovators, but also for companies that want to build uh, in a way that makes sense for the future. Absolutely. And and last week we spoke with Entos Pharmaceuticals and Providence Therapeutics, uh, Alberta-based companies that uh, are are also thrilled with the government's announcements and and see that as an opportunity for them to scale and, and manufacture here. And you mentioned uh, some of the biggest pharma players also, um, you know, paying attention to Alberta. So Gilead, is here in the Edmonton region and expanding. Novo Nordisk has several partnerships. Roche, uh, their National AI Center of Excellence was recently announced. So what what is it that's happening here that you think that's attracting so much attention? And from an investor perspective, a global investor perspective, what should they be paying attention to in Alberta? Uh, there'd be two things. Uh, so one, one factor is the fact that we are um, an area that traditionally um, hasn't been uh, as highlighted. And so there's a lot of hidden gems here when it comes to intellectual property. You, know, you go to a more established region where there's a very close focus from venture capital um, on what's happening. Um, you know, there's there's a lot that's been looked over by by many firms. Uh, whereas here, you're you're much more likely to to stumble upon something really valuable that just needs that additional push. Um, uh, and then from the other aspect, you know, there is uh, this very very uh, strong sort of um, uh, focus on translational expertise that that's really emerging here. Um, and we really think that uh, Alberta is uh, well positioned to serve as that sort of scale up um, uh, environment uh, for, you know, investors coming from uh, biotech around the world, but also here in Canada as well too, um, providing some of that um, uh, later stage uh, support for companies, which uh, globally is difficult to find. Absolutely. So I'd like to bring uh, the doctors back into this and, and uh, throw a few questions to all of you as a group. And uh, so Dr. Houghton, maybe back to you for a moment. You've spoken publicly about what biotech can do for a regional economy. You've seen it happen in the UK. You've mentioned you've seen it in California. And so what do you see as possible given what we talked about in terms of the government announcements here and, and all you've seen in, in terms of the assets here, what do you see as possible for Alberta's economy uh, if we were to grow this sector here? Well, I, I think for a successful biotech industry, uh, you need a number of things. First of all, you've got to have uh, great science being done from local universities. We have that. Uh, so we can tick that box. Secondly, you need event you need infrastructures that we have within our university, within the Li Keqing Institute of Virology, within the Applied Pharmaceutical Institute, and with support from entities like Global Edmonton. So we have the infrastructure. And then thirdly, you need support from the local government, which we have had um, very much from the Alberta government. So. I, I've been part of the UK wave of biotech in the 70s and early 80s. I was part of the biotech wave in the Bay Area of California. I'm totally convinced Alberta will succeed in the biotech industry uh, as well. And uh, this is, I think we're at a perfect time for investors to look us over. Uh, a great time to invest early and uh, both as personal investors, um, organizational investors, and also as pharmaceutical companies to come here. And uh, it's a great time for you to invest. That's my message. Excellent. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I would just like to comment that it's really important for us when we graduate to our students from the universities that they have, they're not all going to go back into universities and become professors, but you need to see this biotech industry develop because this provides wonderful receptors in the community for people who have excellent education, be it from Nate, be it from uh, Grant McEwen, be it from University of Calgary, University of Alberta. If we don't have this type of investment in Alberta, we end up losing many of these highly skilled people to other parts of Canada or to other countries because uh, their technologies and their skills are readily available or readily used in other places if we don't use them here. So I'm very happy to see these investments coming into Alberta at this time provide excellent receptors for our own students and our own highly qualified people. Yeah, I would agree for companies that are looking to establish here, um, it's, it's in many cases going right to the source. Uh, and you know, in this case, the source is also tied to a jurisdiction that has one of the lowest corporate tax rates. We have you know, a whole bunch of business-friendly incentives that have been put in place. Um, and you know, not only do we have the, the manpower and the talent to work in these organizations, we also have the innovation. Uh, and we have a government that has uh, committed to, uh, to ensuring that the industry is vibrant by supporting you know, various aspects along the way that will, that will really set up um, uh, the province as a whole uh, to sort of be where you were at, you know, um, in San Diego decades ago, or uh, South San Francisco a few decades ago, you know, there's there's a there's a groundswell building here. It's you know, it's both on the um, uh, no novel drug development, but also on the manufacturing side. Uh, and there's a very strong role that the province can play uh, in both of these aspects for um, for the global market and for um, companies that are they're scaling here. And uh, Minister, it sounds like these gentlemen have stolen your talking points, but I want to go to you next <laughs> <laughs> and ask if there's anything that uh, anything that you would say to uh, a global investor um, or uh, when we talk about talent, right? We do have a lot of talent here. That's part of our comp compelling value proposition. But even to attract talent um, or, or global investors is, you know, what would you say to them about why they should look at Alberta? Well, I, the biggest thing that I've seen is that, you know, Alberta has the building blocks here. You've got amazing research being done. You have, you know, a government that's committed to creating the, you know, the best possible business environment for scaling and growth, talent development as well here in the province of Alberta. You have very livable cities for attracting talent as well in both of our major centers as well as our mid-size centers as well for where some of these locations may want to set up. So I do think Alberta is very uniquely positioned. We also have one health authority as well. So we have an immense amount of buying power with one consolidated health organizations. So that's another thing as well. We want to leverage as a government is how do we get the best bang for our buck, particularly in light of this pandemic and the fact that we've had vaccine nationalism. We never want to put our citizens' health in jeopardy. And we want to make sure that we're ready for if there's booster shots are needed. Hopefully this is the last pen, real pandemic like this in my life. Uh, hopefully we never have to deal with this again. But in case we do, we want to make sure that we're ready as a problem. And that's key. The other thing that I've seen, and this is a really exciting from the business community side, is that Alberta, many Albertans have done very well for the last few decades uh, and they've built up some wealth and many people are looking for different areas to invest as well. So this is happening just domestically here in Alberta, where you see people are saying that would have historically invested primarily in the energy industry are looking at other places to invest in, and make sure that they can build other communities. They care about their communities and they want to see further opportunities for the next generation. So we're seeing some really encouraging trends around diversification, venture capital, and that's just going to allow us to continue to build and grow in Alberta. And one of the, you know, to talk about uh, uniqueness uh, among ca Canadian provinces, one of the unique attributes, I think, of Alberta is not only do we have one uh, excellent institution, we have two. Uh, so we have two U15 uh, institutions, post-secondary institutions in Alberta that have their own specializations in various aspects of, of healthcare research and innovation and drug development. And uh, we have, between the two major cities, we have a lot of talent, um, uh, infrastructure, and, and opportunity. And uh, so we, we have quite the concentration here. And uh, in terms of being well-positioned to that nearshoring trend, 
we talked about the airport in uh, the Edmonton region being the closest northern airport to uh, Asia via circumpolar routes. So I mean, we put all of that together. There's a lot to, to look at. But when we speak about these institutions and industry, and and Andrew, you're you've done a lot of this, but I'd be interested for all of you. Can you speak about the need for building partnerships and and how we build partnerships between uh, investors and in industry and uh, the research institutions in our region uh, and and other entities like yours, uh, Andrew? And and what does that look like here? I think that's one of our our unique attributes as well is that collaborative element. Yes, absolutely. So over the past, um, especially the past five years, uh, there's been a big change and a real understanding of the sort of commercial application of research. Uh, so one of the things API has has worked to do, in fact, it's one, what we were founded to do, um, was to build that sort of translational capacity uh, that had one foot in the door of academia and one foot in the door of industry um, so that the great research that's produced um, within post-secondary institutions um, has a pathway to market, not just from the intellectual property side, um, but from the commercial development side. Uh, I'm talking about, you know, the, the scale up of manufacturing, the, um, you know, the later stage of, of innovation where uh, you're really scaling companies. And I think that that's something that that's critical for this, uh, for this province to continue to invest in. Uh, and it's also something that, you know, um, even over the past uh, few years has shown a lot of rewards. You know, we've seen uh, companies incubated here uh, that have gone on to to very large uh, market capitalization, capitalizations in the past few years in a very sh short period of time. Uh, for us, you know, some of the companies we've been involved with have have hit a cumulative uh, uh, close to four hundred million dollars in the past few years. Uh, so there's a lot of value to be had here, and investors are starting to realize that. Um, and it's you know, it's really in part this wonderful synergy that we have between all the various aspects of the, uh, that, you know, I hesitate to use this word, but innovation ecosystem, as it were. Um, so that, that we've got all the building blocks, as as the minister said, uh, and, and we've actually become quite good at, um, at using them to build things. I would just comment that I think there's a, you know, we see the competition between the two cities in Alberta, particularly in the sporting area, but you know, the universities do cooperate in many different ways. And for example, you know, we do most of the solid organ transplant, the heart and the lung in Edmonton. Calgary does all the bone marrow transplant. That was rationalized out many years ago when I was dean. We decided that we couldn't have these things duplicated in the two cities. And working with the dean in Calgary at that time, Elvin Smith, we decided that these would be distributed in a way that would be best for the province. And there's a lot of collaboration that goes on uh, between Calgary and Edmonton in the research areas. So that uh, our competition is, is the world, really, not, uh, not Calgary and not uh, Edmonton. We need to work together to capture the very best we can for the province. Michael, you may want to speak a bit about some of the collaborations we have with Calgary. Yes. Um well, one of them has been with the um, computational science department at the University of Calgary. Calgary. Uh, working with our computational scientists, uh, we've come up with uh, algorithmic models to predict uh, uh, cardiotoxicity, drug cardi cardiotoxicity. And also recently, we've actually uh, transferred one of our cell lines to Applied Pharmaceutical Institute, uh, which is a human cardiomyocyte cell that can predict um, cardiotoxicity, you can actually measure it. It's much better than the currently available cell lines which use ovary or kidney cell lines. So yes, we, we greatly benefit from working with the University of Calgary in, in many ways and also in hepatology, we have a lot of good collaborators um, and our vaccine um, will be very helpful to uh, people who inject drugs, both in Edmonton and in Calgary. So we've had um, close relationships with PIs who follow um, that, um, uh, that, that group of people that are very exposed to hepatitis C. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> oh, the other thing, too, and then just more interesting is that with, when we've set up now Invest Alberta that works closely with Edmonton Global and other business development arms uh, across the province, one really interesting slide that they put together was actually 
it had a Calgary Flames player and an Edmonton Oilers player mixing it up in the corner. And, you know, sometimes we, we kind of get into that provincial mindset of, you know, competing with one another when really it is, it, it's a global competition. And it's how do we partner together? How do we leverage all of the assets in Alberta, the talent that we have, the research that's going on here to put our best foot forward? Because, you know, both cities have different expertise, different skill sets. And it's how do you work collaboratively together to make sure you put that right mix together to attract investment here into our province? Yeah. And just to further, you know, for what Dr. Houghton raised, I think it's a perfect example. So the the assay he's talking about is a, uh, is basically a, a new competitor for what is currently the gold standard uh, testing that's done for drugs um, as they're part of their drug development process. And it's something that was developed uh, in the lab uh, at the Li Kaixing, working in collaboration with uh, folks at the University of Calgary. Uh, and now together with uh, them and Applied Pharmaceutical Innovation, we're, we're moving forward to see if we can start, you know, uh, applying that in the global drug development industry. And one of the things that um, that global investors may not be aware of, because it's a, a good, well-kept secret, but we're trying to put it out there a little bit broader, is uh, we have uh, world-class expertise as well in artificial intelligence and nanotechnology. And so nanomedicine and all of these aspects are combining to, to really make us a, a unique powerhouse. And so Minister, I wonder if you might be able to speak to the innovation aspect of this a little bit and, and what the government has done to encourage um, our, our innovation and tech sectors, which also complement the life sciences sector. That's a, I mean, that's a great question. If you take a look at the momentum that's happening right now in Alberta as a whole, in the venture capital space, the innovation and technology you know, trajectory that we're on is just it's a huge growth curve. So 2018, we attracted about $100 million of investment capital into venture in tech startups, a lot of them leveraging AI machine learning. 2019, $220 million in Alberta. And then 2020, $455 million going into tech startups here in our province. We're actually now attracting major international technology companies to set up offices here in Alberta. So huge growth trajectory. And this is another thing too, like, you know, we've got a Nobel Prize winner here on this uh, call here today, or this presentation here today. We also have leading cutting edge research being done in artificial intelligence and machine learning here in Alberta. That's why Google DeepMind set up one of its early offices here in our province. We have Amy, which is an amazing institute based in Edmonton that develops so tech, tech talent. So we have one of the best research and development opportunities here for our graduates uh, in this province. And just like they were talking about earlier, is that they wanna stay here in Alberta. Many, but many of them before were looking at other jurisdictions, but we're building out that ecosystem right here in our province. One other thing to note building on that is that our health department is with Service Alberta and this has been publicly announced before, uh, they're, they're looking at how do you leverage data? And the personal privacy is key. So you have to work with the privacy commissioner, but the advancements in you know, big data and all the other things called synthetic data it has huge applications that could save thousands of lives and find efficiencies here in our province, but also save you know hundreds of thousands of lives around the world. So there's a huge piece that goes into that artificial intelligence. And we wanna make sure we position our policy as well as talent to make sure we can capitalize on it. Great point. So, I mean, here's my summation of all that. We have the biggest brains, we have access to the biggest markets, we have government support, and we specialize in partnerships. So, I mean, really, um, the list of reasons to look at Alberta for your next investment is, is getting longer and longer. But uh, maybe to sum up, I want to give everyone an opportunity to give any final thoughts of anything we haven't covered today. You know, from a from like I said, an, the perspective of a global investor, or if you're somebody who works in the biotech space and you're you're thinking of Alberta, um, anything that you want to to say to them, or anything that we might have missed. And so maybe we'll start with um, Dr. Tyrell. Well, I just want to emphasize again that was mentioned by Andrew. But Gilead Sciences has uh, been a very successful company in Foster City, California. And Gilead Sciences has their largest site outside of the United States here in Edmonton. And that's developed because of a very strong chemistry department over the years. And uh, it started with a small rollout company called Raylo Chemicals. It moved through several companies, but it eventually was bought by Gilead. But they didn't move. They stayed here because of a strong university, strong chemistry, and many of the graduates from here are being employed by Gilead. 
So it's we just need to repeat that so that we build an ecosystem or eco culture with several of these or a number of these that will really augment uh, the reputation of the city and of the province and make this a great place to do business. That's great. And you're right, Alberta has one of Canada's largest advanced chemistry sectors. Uh, and and the, the size of the sector and the expertise in the sector also reinforce why companies like Gilead have chosen to locate here. Dr. Houghton, final thoughts? Um, well, I came to the University of Alberta from California 10 years ago. I came to work with Dr. Tyrell, which has been great. Um, but I also came to try and apply my experience in research and biotechnology to help Alberta grow its biotech industry. And we're well on the way to doing that. As I mentioned earlier, I think this is a great time to be looking at Alberta and Edmonton um, for investments, uh, both in our specific programs, where we're showing great progress in so many areas, but also uh, for institutional investors and companies to think about coming to Edmonton. As you heard from Lorne, Gilead have done really well here. So we would welcome all types of investment. And I think it's a great time to catch the Edmonton wave. <laughs> we certainly do welcome all types of investment, uh, both in terms of investing in some of our amazing companies, uh, investing in the commercialization of the amazing research coming out of Li Kaixing and other institutes and investing in facilities. So um, sir, you could uh, check out edmontonglobal.ca or uh, uh, the connect with the province uh, to see about investment opportunities. Thank you, Dr. Houghton. And uh, Andrew, we'll go to you next. Final yeah. thoughts. So just to, to echo both uh, Drs. Tyrell and Houghton, um, uh, and maybe delve into the chemical side a little bit more. Um, there is you know, a whole bunch of expertise within the province. One of the benefits of being a oil and gas region, especially one with difficult to get uh, hydrocarbons, um, is we've built out very strong uh, capabilities on the chemistry side, uh, on the engineering side, on the technician side, and a lot of those skills are uh, are ones that you can basically use the same training programs to pivot them to a different industry. So we've we've built a lot of critical mass um, that is here and available to help companies scale in that manufacturing side. Um, not to mention the the extremely strong um, broader health training that we have. You know, both from the University of Alberta, University of uh, Calgary and other post-secondary institutions within within the province. There's a lot of that talent pipeline here, um, and you know, utilizing it in a new way is something that that will provide a competitive advantage to companies. So they're not in the same environment that they would be when they're um, working within uh, a crowded ecosystem like um, like San Diego. Um, and at the same time, uh, you know, we have had a lot of senior folks in industry who. Um, either you know have built careers here in the province or have gone elsewhere, who serve as that senior leadership for those types of companies. You know, one of the big challenges is getting um, the, that talent at the senior level. The, there, there is a lot. Uh, you know, one of the companies recently here um, in the province um, uh, that had spun out years ago uh, just got FDA approval for their for their drug. So, you know, there's there's a growing momentum here, uh, and there's the capability to to do this for company after company after company. Those are great points and, and actually it brings up something that um, both Entos and, and Providence mentioned last week about the fact that because we have this expertise in the chemistry and oil and gas sectors, it's really easy to find lab space here and easily convert it to um, something that's suitable for small molecule manufacturing. So um, that, that actually gives us a leg up, I would say, on any other jurisdiction. And to your point about not being crowded, um, you know, this is this is a space where we're cost effective, but also you can hit the ground running. And I think, you know, we we started this conversation by speaking about the need for speed. And uh, I think when it comes to our assets, as well as government support, uh, Alberta is a place that understands the need for speed and, and we support that. So thank you for those comments. And and uh, finally, Minister, you get the final word. Oh, thank you so much. Number one, just thank you everybody for being a part of this today. This is always, I always find these things are just the best because you get to learn lots and, and you know get the occasional word in as well. But uh, I think when I uh, talk to people that are looking 
at Alberta as a place to invest. I mean, you've got talent, you have infrastructure, you've got amazing research that's going on here, and you have the building blocks to build out an industry. And you also have a government that wants to diversify our economy and make sure that we take care of the health of our citizens. So you have all of the right mix here to make sure that we have a real opportunity to build out this industry, invest in it, grow in it, train people. But when it comes to talent, like I'm learning more and more in this field. It's all about attracting talent to your field because businesses want to be where the talent is as well. And we have very livable cities, some of the most livable cities in the world that always score amongst the highest ranks in the world. You've got amazing opportunities for people that want to come and be a part of this, as well as a very highly educated workforce as well that you want to build upon and grow. So I just think we have the right mix here in Alberta. And really, I think it's time for our, you know many other industries in our province to take that mantle and, and grow to that next level. Absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. I think um, I learned a lot and I hope that uh, our, our international viewers did as well. Uh, we'll supply all of the websites. Uh, so for those who want to get in touch with you to learn more about API or the Li Kaixing or the government of Alberta's uh, economic recovery plan, uh, which we're really excited about. So thank you so much. And also thank you for what you're all doing uh, to support the growth of this sector and also to, to keep Albertans safe. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much, Lynette. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.